This section is on T waves and can be found on page 43 of the uh, Cardiac Dysrhythmia Interpretation Workbook. So T waves represent ventricular repolarization and um, the morphology of the T wave uh, or the deflection or vector of the T wave is not important where rhythm interpretation is concerned. So we don't care about the shape of the, the T wave. We don't care whether it's up going or down going. That's completely and utterly irrelevant when it comes to rhythm interpretation. Um, when it comes to 12 lead interpretation, that's a bit of a different story. Uh, then it becomes more important, but where rhythm interpretation is concerned, it's not. So here we have um, uh, what would be considered a normal uh, T wave, which is um, upright and contoured, and uh, we expect to see a T wave that looks like that. Here on the other hand is a T wave that's uh, upright and contoured, but we have some ST elevation. So here's the baseline uh, roughly here, and here's the ST segment. It's elevated above the baseline. This is important in a 12 lead ECG when we're uh, interpreting acute myocardial infarctions, but when it comes to rhythm interpretation, again, not important. What's important here is the fact that there's a P wave, that there's a QRS, and if there's a P wave and a QRS consistently, then we have a sinus rhythm. This next one here, we have uh, lots and lots of artifact, probably muscle artifact, probably the patient moving or perhaps shivering or something like that. Again, you know, we're looking for the key components. We're looking for P waves. We're looking for QRSs. The fact that the T wave has lots of artifact uh, really makes no difference. Um, we want to try to get a clear tracing, so we want to try to reduce patient movement either by keeping them warm or um, you know, making their limbs comfortable, perhaps um, adjusting the, the lead cables to make sure that they're not too tight, that the, that the electrodes are on properly, perhaps even moving the electrodes away from large muscle mass um, so we can get a decent tracing. But here again, the T wave morphology is a little off because of uh, artifact, but it doesn't matter in terms of rhythm interpretation. This next one here, we have um, a T wave that's uh, kind of flattened. And, um, uh, you know, the only question here is um, we know the T wave represents repolarization. The question is where does repolarization end? Because one of the things we talked about earlier is the QT interval. That's from the onset of the um, QRS to the uh, end of the T wave. And a normal QT interval should be less than half of the RDAR interval. Um, so in this particular tracing, it's difficult to tell where ventricular repolarization ends and where we're back to the uh, the baseline and then the P wave again. The other thing concerning about this particular ECG is where's the P wave or is there a P wave? So we need um, you know a longer tracing and perhaps uh, we need to look at other leads. But again, getting back to my point about T waves, um, the T wave morphology again is irrelevant. We're looking for P waves, we're looking for QRSs, we're trying to interpret the underlying rhythm. And uh, finally, here we have another um, T wave that's kind of flattened. Um, what's this bump here? Mm. Anyone's guess, right? Could it be part of ventricular repolarization? Perhaps. Um, we're not entirely sure. But again, the, the key elements here are uh, P wave, QRS, and if we see that consistently, we know we're dealing with the sinus rhythm. Finally, uh, we'll look at U waves, which is not something you see too often, and it's a bit of a subtle finding, but. Um, uh, so this is a U wave here, and um, not not important in terms of rhythm interpretation, but in, important to recognize it as distinct from the P wave. So um, it, the U wave may represent the final stage of repolarization. Uh, a prominent U wave may also suggest the presence of hypokalemia, cardiomyopathy, left ventricular hypertrophy, or diabetes. Uh, but but by no means is a U wave diagnostic in that sense. We'd really have to look at a 12 lead. We'd also have to look at you know other uh, things such as blood work, obviously, to support things like uh, hypokalemia and um, you know things like echocardiograms to to validate or to to verify that someone has a cardiomyopathy. Um, and there are ECG signs of left ventricular hypertrophy that we can um, uh, diagnose on a 12 lead ECG. Diabetes is another story. But the uh, the difference between a U wave and a P wave, and this is important, U wave is typically a little longer, a little flatter, and uh, not as abruptly upright as a P wave would be.